Are you pregnant and scared of the solar eclipse? Has everyone told you numerous things to follow during the solar eclipse, but you're not able to because you have some important meeting at the office or you have to go out? Like you, I was also told by everyone around me a bunch of things to do. I will discuss which all I did and which ones should you do. So stay till the end. My name is Gurpreet Kaur Sanyal and welcome to Momentum Women where we support you in your fertility, prenatal and postpartum journey. I should tell you that I am spiritual in a very scientific way. I believe in the mantras, I believe in the Vedas, I believe in rituals and culture and afterlife and the power of the universe and so on. In this video, I will discuss each belief that is around solar eclipse, but in a modern contemporary way and also through a mythological way. Before I discuss the beliefs or myths, I will take you to a time where these were originated. Of course, no one knows that what was the exact time when these were created, but they were created somewhere in the past, like a long time ago, when there was no electricity, no ambulances, no hospitals, etc. So people had to be very careful around uh, sensitive times, such as pregnancy. Obviously, we are all careful about that. So they must have developed a set of rules to follow during pregnancy to keep the mother and the child safe. These advices would have been carried on for ages. When I was pregnant, I had both the solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. I was luckily working from home. So I had the luxury to listen to what people were saying and follow it if I wanted to and if it made any sense to me. Also because at the back of my mind, I thought that they were advising me for the good of my baby and if I can do something that is good for the baby, then there is no harm. Every culture has its own things to follow. However, if I had to go to work or I had an urgent meeting, I would have worked because there is no scientific backing or scientific evidence towards most of the belief. So let's start debunking these myths or beliefs that you want to call it. Belief number one, do not go out of your home. Per mythology, it is believed that there are negative energies in the environment during a solar eclipse. So it may impact the mother and the unborn child. There is no scientific evidence to support this. Thus, if you want, you can go out if it's really important or you have to work. Now, most women these days are independent and they have to go out. So if it's really important, I would say you can go out. But if you do not want to, it's a good time to take some rest. Belief number two, you should not watch the solar eclipse directly or indirectly. They say that if a pregnant woman should look at the solar eclipse directly or indirectly, it might harm the unborn child. I'm not sure if it can harm the baby, but I can tell you what it can do. There is scientific evidence that states that if you look at the sun without proper eye protection during a solar eclipse, it can cause eclipse blindness. Now you can talk to your doctor about it because I think the exposure to the light can cause damage or even destroy the cells in the retina, uh, which is at the back of your eye. So you can talk to your doctor about this. So it's always, of course, good if you do not look at the sun directly or indirectly when there is a solar eclipse. Now, belief number three, pregnant women shouldn't eat or drink anything. Now, this is followed as it is believed that the number of microbes increase in the environment due to the lack of direct sun rays. Thus, the food can get spoiled easily. However, these days, food can be preserved in a refrigerator and heating food is 
not a problem. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this belief because no pregnant woman should be kept without food or water for long. It can be really dangerous if a pregnant woman doesn't eat or drink water for long. Always check with your doctor before you decide not to eat or drink anything during the eclipse. Okay? Belief number four. Some people say that pregnant women shouldn't wear anything made of metal or shouldn't keep any sharp object nearby. To be honest, there is no harm to follow this one. (laughs) I am assuming that this was created so that a pregnant woman shouldn't hurt herself while there was no direct sunlight. Even if now that you live in a well-lit home and there are less chances of you hurting yourself, it's okay. Do not keep a sharp object near you. I think you'll do well. Belief number five. A pregnant woman shouldn't sleep during the eclipse hours. There is no scientific evidence to support this one. But I do have a story to tell you. I was told by one of my friends that when her mom was pregnant with her, she slept during the eclipse. And while sleeping, her feet turned the wrong way. Thus, my friend was born with a slightly twisted foot for which she had to get therapies done. I am not sure that if her mom's sleeping position impacted her formation inside the womb or not. Did I make sure not to sleep? I did. After this story, I didn't sleep. Did my feet turn the wrong way? Uh, Yes, it did. For about five seconds as I pulled a muscle. Was there an impact on my child? Luckily, there wasn't. So you can decide yourself if you would like to sleep during the eclipse or not. I should repeat myself that there is no scientific evidence to support it. Belief number six. You should chant mantras or read religious books. Like I said, I am a big fan of chanting mantras. I am a big fan of reading uh, the religious books. I believe what's written in the Bhagavad Gita, that if you recite or if you say a word, it never gets destroyed. It just revolves around the universe because it's just energy. So energy can never be destroyed. I'm a big fan of that. So if I get an opportunity to sit in a peaceful place and chant mantras, I would take it. It also provides you positivity. So I would say that if you can be positive, if you can chant mantras, if you can be close to uh, godly energy, it will be good for you any which ways and your baby because your vibes will affect the baby. Belief number seven. Close all the windows and any outlets from where sun rays can come in. Well, mythologically, it is known to be a dark period of time and an environment full of negative energy. I believe that. But does it impact your unborn child? I am not sure of that. It is up to you for whatever beliefs that you want to carry along. Remember, it's your life, it's your pregnancy, it is your child. So even if you plan to follow any of the beliefs, uh, it should be your choice. Be informed, be educated about these things, not just blindly follow anything. Even if you are blindly following anything, just be very careful. For example, the food and the water bit. Talk to your doctor before you do anything that can be dangerous for your health. You can have food right before the eclipse. Uh, If it's a shorter eclipse, you can perhaps pull it off. But like I said, do talk to your doctor. Well, I also had to tell you that which ones I did and which ones I did not. Okay, so did I do that? Belief number one, 
did I go out? No, I did not. Like I said, I was working from home, so I did not go out. Uh, did I try and watch it? I did not. <laughs> uh, did I eat or drink anything? Yes, I did. I did. I did eat and drink. I did I not wear anything of metal or keep a sharp object nearby? I did not keep a sharp object nearby, but I, I was wearing a bangle. I was wearing a bangle of metal. I did not sleep during that time. Uh, I did chant mantras for a short period of time because after that I had to start working and I did I close the windows I did I did close the windows I also used camphor to lighten the air in the room please follow us on insta subscribe to the channel because there is a lot of content coming up which is going to help you in your fertility pregnancy and postpartum mental, physical, motherhood, you name it. We are there for you. Okay? See you the next time. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end.